Hi everyone, it's Mary from Stampin' in the Sand. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I might be a couple minutes late because I got caught up in some other things and wasn't ready. But it looks like some other folks might be jumping on a little late too. So we'll just start to get organized here. So I had put up a photo earlier on my site here showing the cards that we are going to make today. Hi Christina, hi Janet, hi Kathy. And the colors were so off. I couldn't believe it. I went back to check on my own post and I didn't know what color that was, but it sure was pretty. But today we're actually playing with, oops, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I went out and came back in or what, but I tapped something I shouldn't have tapped. I got to keep my fingers to myself. So um, I'll keep them in my pocket. So we are playing with Sweet Sugar Plum today. I had some questions as to what color I had used and I realized that it was not appearing the way it should have. So it is Sweet Sugar Plum. So that'll answer that question. But I also am just checking that I'm coming up all square and, and true to form in the computer and it looks like I am. So if you were here with me on Tuesday, we had talked about whether or not we would consider ourselves crafters or collectors. And if you saw me pop on earlier with a view of my craft room, I had decided I was a collector and I want to be more of a crafter. So this week was about using your stash. And while I was trolling around on Facebook this morning, I came across a post by Kylie Bertucci. She's a demonstrator over in Australia. She does fabulous work. And if you've heard the hashtag, um, what is it, love it, chop it, it's all about chopping your designer series paper and not letting it collect on the shelves because as pretty as it is to look at, it's meant to be used and shared, right? Not sit on a shelf, hidden in a drawer, etc., etc. And if you could see how much designer series paper I have in this room, you'd know why I've decided that I need to chop it. So we're going to learn all about chopping our paper in the coming weeks. So if you're just joining us, just a few other details to go into before we get started. Um, we only have two more days, two and a half days left of celebration. So if you are collecting those celebration goodies for free, you're going to want to place those orders and get your free product before Saturday night because it goes away come Sunday morning. I can't believe celebration's almost over. I placed my, what I think is my last celebration order yesterday and I can't believe I don't have everything. I didn't get it all. There's still a lot more I don't have, but I'm saving my money because I've got on stage coming up and next, the end of next week, I'm going to Atlanta. So I need to save my money. So as far as celebration, just don't forget if you go over to my online store and you enter this week's Live at Five hostess code, you will get a free gift from me and including some hand stamped cards. And you don't want to miss out on that because freebie, more freebies are, are just more freebies. Who wants to miss out on freebies? So here's our hostess code for the rest of this week. The other thing happening right now is we still have our paper pumpkin 50% off for your first two months if you're a new subscriber with the hostess code or the hostess code, the coupon code save 500418 As always, at the end of this video, I'll have a link up to where you can sign up for your First two months of Paper Pumpkin for free. You just follow the links and answer the questions and you're all good to go. And you'll get your first two months of Paper Pumpkin for free. If you've been tuning in, uh, the last couple of months we've had some fantastic cards. This was this month's March card. 
that we made here in my Live at Five card class when I did my reveal. This is actually a coordinating envelope, but you could easily cut it up and use it on a card. And then this was the card that we made in class. We also made this class the month before from February's kit, which I actually bought a refill for. So we may be giving that away one of these days as I purge my stash. And the other thing happening right now is if you are interested in receiving 20% off all of your future purchases, you can join my team. We'd love to have you. We're the Sand Dollar Stampers, and we are a, a team under the Team Stamp It name. So we have a very, very large group of demonstrators that are very active here in here on Facebook as well as um, personally we all get we get together from time to time we're all going to meet up at our various on stage locations it's a really great group and if you join now during celebration through Saturday night not only do you get your welcome packet from me and your 20% off as long as you're an active demonstrator but you also get two free stamp sets of your choice from Stampin' Up in addition to your starter kit. And that's the best deal going because it's only $99 for $125 worth of product. And then as a bonus during celebration, you can get an additional two free stamp sets, which can have a value up to $101 combined for free. So that's the best deal going and there's only two days left to grab that one. Okay. So the only other thing I wanted to share with you is when we made our cards on Tuesday, we had used the Pick a Pattern papers. And if you missed Tuesday, and I'm trying not to toss everything on the floor here like happened to me earlier. On Tuesday, we had created these cards from the Pick a Pattern designer series paper pack. And we just cut, chopped our paper into three by four inch pieces. And then we were able to make 12 cards from one sheet of cardstock. So this is what we made on Tuesday's class. And after class, I was thinking about what other papers I could chop. And somebody actually mentioned, hold on a second, on I think my YouTube channel, when I posted the video on YouTube, they had mentioned that they were looking at the Naturally Eclectic Designer Series paper and needed help with some ideas for that. And if you're not familiar with this, this is the natural, Naturally Eclectic and it's in our annual catalog and it's a lot of watercolor type motif and then some of the diamonds and gems not sure how they exactly tied in to this, but it's a nice pattern. So this is the Naturally Eclectic. And again, I haven't chopped it. So I did some chopping. And this is one of the sheets that you get within the Naturally Eclectic Designer Series paper. And I loved this whole wash here. So I ended up cutting it this way and I did it three inches wide, and then I cut it into four inches in the other direction and started playing with it. And these are a couple of the cards I came up with, and I don't know if you can see the shine on that because I actually did a Wink of Stella wash on the sky. So I thought this looked like a really pretty sky motif. And because I'm all about using products that I have been collecting, and hoarding and haven't been using, I decided I wanted to use some stamp sets that I had never inked up. And I used, I'm trying to find the stamp set because I had it right here, staged and ready to go. And of course now I can't find it. I must have put it away. But this stamp set is in the annual catalog, which I do have. And I'm sorry about that. I had the stamp set. I bet when I was cleaning my room earlier, I put it away. 
I'm so silly. Okay, so anyways, it's called Dare to Dream, and it's a hostess set, so you'll find it in the back of the annual catalog. And I got this as my first hostess set way back when the annual catalog first came out because I just thought it was so cute and I loved the fonts. So I used it on this card and I just fussy cut the balloon and I stamped my Every Day is an Adventure on the front of the DSP. And then on the background, I don't know if you can see it in the lighting, but I actually stamped lightly the clouds tone on tone behind this layer. And then on randomly throughout the cl clouds, I put some Winkostella on random clouds. So I thought that came out a really, really pretty card. And then this card, I actually used the greener part of the paper. So that's right here in the middle. And I used the greeting, sending smiles from across the miles. That one is from Lift Me Up, the Lift Me Up stamp set. And then these trees down here, those are in the new waterfront. Is that what it is? Stamp set. I should know these things, right? In the new occasions catalog. And I made it look like a mountain scene as if I, well, you could be in the Pacific Northwest, I guess, but I'm from the East Coast. I'm up from, I'm originally from up in Massachusetts, so it reminded me of the hills and the trees up in New England and Maine and New Hampshire, up in that area. Um, so that was the motif I went to on that card, and I'm flipping through my occasions catalog, and why can't you find what you want when you want it? I may as well give up because I'm gonna make you guys sit there forever, but I, that's waterfront. So then I did some Winka Stella again on the sky and on the trees. So I thought that came out really cute. So I wanted to show you guys those because they came from my class on Tuesday and somebody just asked what this, this designer series paper is from. This is Naturally Eclectic and it's in the back of the annual catalog. That's where you'll find that one. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy said, very pretty. Thank you. And yes, Teresa, you've got to love the waterfront stamp set. So today, what are we doing today? Because we're all about today, right? So today we're going to make these cards here. It's a pair of cards and I'm going by Kylie's Love It, Chop It. And today we are chopping Petal Garden Designer Series paper. As you can tell, I've used a ton of it, not, um, because I never chop my paper. I just sit and look at it. So this time I pulled out this sheet here. It's a nice tone on tone stripe. Again, from Petal Garden Designer Series Paper Stack. It's a six by six stack from the annual catalog. And I chopped it into three by three. So this is a six by six piece. I cut it to three inches by three inches. And that gave me four pieces for four different cards. And then I went to my stamps and I looked for stamp sets that I've had for a while and haven't used. And I had this one sitting on my desk. It's perennial birthday. It's from the occasions catalog. I loved it the minute I saw it in the occasions catalog, but it took me months, took me a couple months to order it. So I just got it in, I think, um, a few weeks ago, and I decided I have to use it because it's just sitting here doing absolutely nothing. So I'm using this, I wanted to use this one, and I must have spent four hours on Pinterest last night looking for ideas. And then I didn't use any of the ideas I found on Pinterest. I went off on my own. And I decided I was going to pair it with Layering Love because I've had this set for quite a while. This was in, I think this was in last year's annual catalog and it made it back into this year's annual catalog. So I've had this quite a while and I really haven't used it that much. And I love it. So I decided I was going to show that some love today as well. And I think they paired up pretty well. I thought they, they came out pretty. So where 
The Sweet Sugar Plum is a retiring in color, so if you like Sweet Sugar Plum, you need to start stocking up on everything Sweet Sugar Plum now because those colors are retiring at the end of May if they even last that long. That's part of the 2016-2018 in colors. So I pulled the Sweet Sugar Plum from that family and then I pulled the Emerald Envy from that family. So we have Sweet Sugar Plum and Emerald Envy and then for more on my leaves, I pulled in the Lemon Lime Twist and what is this one? Oh my gosh, learn your colors, Mary. Berry Burst. So we're gonna, our colors for today are the Berry Burst, the Lemon Lime Twist, and those are from the in colors that will carry forward for one more year. Then for our retiring in colors, we will have our Emerald Envy and Sweet Sugar Plum. So those are the four core colors that we're gonna use on today's cards. From the stamp set, I need the large flower image, I need the little leaf image, make sure we're in camera here, and then this little tiny dual flower image. And then I'm going to use a sponge dauber to color in my flower. So I have that out. We're also using the layering circles dies. I have the largest scalloped circle and the stitched shapes. I have the largest stitched circle. I'm also stamping in archival black ink for my coloring. And I also have this absolutely beautiful berry burst cotton ribbon. And historically, ribbons have never carried over into the next annual catalog. That's historically, not to say that it won't happen this time. So if you like this ribbon, you should probably stock up on it before it is gone. And I've already done some of my cutting and a little bit of my stamping too. So I have, I've already die cut my largest circles from the Sweet Sugar Plum. And I have my three by three pieces of the Designer Series paper. Those are three by three. Then out of the Sweet Sugar Plum, I cut some cardstock that is three and an eighth by three and an eighth. And then just because I didn't like the tone on tone on tone look, I added the berry burst in a three and a quarter by three and a quarter just to give it a little bit extra oomph. I just needed it to pop a little bit more. So I have that. And then we have two card bases in Sweet Sugar Plum. So I cut an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock to four and a quarter by 11, two pieces of it scored it at five and a half. We'll fold those in half, we'll fold those in half and have our two card bases. For the inside of my card, I hope I'm not going too fast. On the inside of my card, I decorated it with a simple piece of Whisper White cardstock, stamped my flowers and in each corner. And now I have room to either do a happy birthday or just do a thinking of you or any kind of written message on the inside. So I've already pre-stamped those just to speed things up a little bit for you. And I've also pre-stamped my live, laugh, love, and my enjoy the little things. Why did I pre-stamp them? Well, I'm using the archival black and I've noticed that when using archival black, it does take a little bit longer to dry unless you're going to heat set it. And when I put it through the big shot for my original samples, I smudged one of my greetings just a bit. So I wanted to make sure that was good and dry before we did our cutting today. So that'll just speed stuff up a little bit and then we can do some stamping and additional cutting together. So I'm just gonna move all this out of the way now that you know what we're using. Get another screenshot of that hostess code so you don't miss out on the freebies. And I'll have that back at the end. So I'm just going to grab my big shot. Okay, so we got our big shot. 
All right. And we're just going to bring in our messages and our die. And we're just going to cut these out quickly and hopefully without jerking you guys around too much. And yes, my handle is still missing the screw, so it still doesn't fit right. But I haven't sent it across the room again lately. I just need more room underneath this camera. I need more room. I'm a little tight. All right, so we're gonna pop this one out. I should have just die cut these before we started, but I didn't get that far. All right. So actually, while I was, the one of the reasons I wasn't as prepared as I should have been is I ended up finding this thread on our demonstrator Facebook page and they were talking about Facebook Lives and they were critiquing those that do Facebook Lives. And I was kind of happy that I didn't see my name pop up. But there was this whole discussion about whether people liked Facebook Lives or didn't like Facebook Lives and why. And a lot of people didn't like them because of too much chitter chat. So if you guys ever have any feedback on my lives, be kind, but I'm happy to hear any feedback you may have, constructive criticism or otherwise. Just be nice, because I'm very sensitive, and nobody likes to, nobody likes to feel bad. Okay, so I've cut these out, and now I'm just going to stamp some flowers with my archival black. And really the placement totally depends on how much room I've left when I did my die cutting. But because I'm stamping black with black, I really don't wanna, I don't wanna overlap my words. Let's see. I think the other time I did my leaves going down. Let's see how it looks going up. Well, that's kind of cute. I like that. That came out cute. All right, so now we need a big flower for the other one. I'm gonna try to do this without hitting the camera. Oh, that came out pretty good too. Not doing too bad so far. Although I do need a place to put this black stamp. All right. Sorry. I need another piece of, of scrap paper. That's how accidents happen when you leave too much archival black stick it laying around, whether it's on a stamp or on a or it's an ink pad, you always risk getting into a mess. Okay, so this little guy, I just randomly put on this one. If you can see my sample. Can you see my sample in there? So, where do I want to put this? I'll put that there. All right, so that's that one. Then I've got just the leaves and see how we do stamping these. Okay, so that's good. I did that. I think that's enough, right? You can take it a little bit too far sometimes. Okay, so 
All we have left now is to do our coloring and we'll let those dry because we need to do our tone on tone for our cards. All right, so I have to actually, I have to get a stamp and scrub without tripping. I should have done I should have done the um, tone on tone first. It would have been easier to clean the stamp. Best laid plans, right? That's the worst thing that happens during this Facebook Live. I'm golden. Okay. So now I'm going to do my tone on tone. And I'm just randomly stamping using my sweet sugar plum. I'm just gonna randomly stamp my background. And random and I are not the best of friends. Believe it or not, I find random very challenging. It must just be weird, right? Okay. So I'm stamping off and then stamping back on. Fill that void where I kind of missed. You didn't see that, right? Okay. All right, I think if I do one more on that, I'm gonna lose it. Okay. Sorry, this is the most tedious part of the whole class. I probably could have done one of these first if I had thought about it so you wouldn't have had to sit through both of them, but we're done, we got it done. It's all good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this away before I have an accident and we can start building. All right, because I'm still gonna give those another opportunity to dry a little bit. So I've got all my layers here and I'm just gonna use some liquid glue and that's the back side of the paper. I like the liquid glue because it, it forgives me when I have to adjust. Okay. So there's my nice extra layer. Okay, so that's one. Just pretend we're hitting fast forward. If this was YouTube, you could fast forward or I would have already fast forward through the glue part. <laughs> Can't do that when you're live, though. There's only so much prep you want to do ahead. All right. 
just gonna so I'm gonna add that okay so that's done so now we just need to do some coloring all right so I used my dauber I love these little daubers I have to I actually discovered I need to order more daubers so I have my daubers and I'm just going to ink up my dauber and then I'm going to take some off and I'm going to put my highest concentration in the middle and then just let it fade towards the edges. Oops, sorry, I mean to hit you. So it's kind of like I'm doing a high concentration in the middle and then cleaning off the dauber around the edges and it's okay if you go outside the lines I'm usually an inside the lines girl but on these I went seriously on the outsides and then we're gonna do the same thing on our inserts so get a high concentration to the center and then almost like clean it off towards the outside. Okay, so there's that one. And there's one more. So starting next week, or not, well, the week after the week, the week after that, because next week we have on stage. Um, starting the week after next, I'm going to be doing some throwback Thursdays and what I'm going to be doing with that is on Thursdays, I'll be bringing in some cards I created with some oldies, but goodies from my stash, some, you know, some retired sets that I haven't seen love in a while. And then I'm going to recreate the cards using current stamp sets and current designer series paper, current colors, whatnot, just to show you how to make something that's old new again and how to make the new, make something new from something old. So I don't know if that appeals to anybody, but if you... If you have any older stamp sets that you haven't used in a while and you want some inspiration for them, send me a message, send me a note, uh, send me a, a messenger or comment here on the post. And if I have that stamp set, maybe I'll feature it during one of my throwback Thursdays. All right, so on the leaves, if you can see here, I just did a brush outline on the leaves and that was using the Emerald Envy marker. And then I filled it in with the Lemon Lime Twist and just gave it like an artistic look. You could also, if you wanted to make it a little less, a little more, more muted, you could use a watercolor pencil or a watercolor brush instead of using straight marker to paper. And on this, insert here I thought the middle the centers of these flowers was a little dark so on this one I pulled in the lemon lime twist in the middle and I thought that looked much better but again if you're doing this you can do you can have it go whichever way you want okay so I'm just gonna outline my leaves and hopefully you can see this because I'm trying to get it so that I can see it and you can see it at the same time. So hopefully I'm in the camera. I think that's in the camera, right? All right, so I'm gonna do that one. And then I'm gonna do this one. And I'm not I'm trying not to make it too perfect because I just want it to look not really, wa a little more vibrant than watercolored, but I just don't want it 
perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go that way. So anywhere I have a leaf, I'm gonna do that dark green. Okay. So I think I got all the leaves. I don't see any leaves I missed. All right, so then we have our lemon lime twist. I'm, I'm just gonna touch the insides of the leaves with that. So there's that one. That one I already did. Okay. All right. I don't see any more leaves. All right, so now I just need to do the insides of these little guys. Love my markers. Okay, oops, here's one down here. There's three on here. There's none there. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I think I got all of those, right? All right, and then we have our Berry Burst. And I'm just coloring the heart on that one with Berry Burst. Then I have Sweet Sugar Plum. And that's just for this little, little guy here. Okay, so that's that one. And I think that's all the coloring. I don't think I've missed anything. Okay, <clears throat> so that's all done. So for the insides of the cards, I'm just gonna do one strip. And I like fast fuse. I'm just gonna do one strip across the top. Oh, I just killed that fast fuse. That fast fuse is empty. All right, and I'm just going to put that on the inside of the card like that. And then this one is gonna go here. And if I had thought of it, which I didn't, I would have done my envelopes. I forgot to do my envelopes. So if we were gonna do the envelopes, I would probably just do some flowers on the flap. I gotta get a fast fuse. Hold on a second. I'll tell you, I forgot about my envelope, so I guess I'll have to do it later. I usually try to have a complete. When I'm just doing a couple cards, I usually like to do my envelopes during class at the same time. All right, so now for these, I'm gonna use Fast Fuse on the back of my Whisper White. And I do that because I'm not really a huge fan. Oops, that doesn't go there. I'm not really a big fan of using the liquid glue on Whisper White because it tends to, it, it doesn't smooth out well. And it always ends up looking kind of lumpy. All right, so I got that one. So I like to use Fast Fuse or Snail when I'm using the Whisper White. But just remember with Fast Fuse, it's not forgiving. So the first place you put it is where it's staying. All right, so I've got those. 
And I have my dimensionals. And these are double popped up. So if you mail these, you should put in another piece of cardstock, you know, and it can just be any kind of like heavyweight computer paper. It doesn't have to be our nice cardstock. But I find if you put that over the top, when you put it in the mail, it makes it smoother for their machines and for keeping it whole as it travels. And especially if you have rhinestones, what am I doing? If you have rhinestones on your project, if you put just another layer of cardstock over your completed project, the rhinestones won't end up poking through the envelope. Just a tip. All right, so this one, because of the script, it really doesn't matter how straight it goes or doesn't. All right, and then these are going up on dimensionals too. I love dimensionals. I'm a dimensional addict. I had probably five packs when we moved in, moved here. So I hadn't been ordering. Usually I throw a pack of dimensionals in every order, but I had so many, I figured I didn't need to order anymore. So I didn't. And all of a sudden I'm down to the last sheet. That's my last sheet of dimensionals. So guess what went on yesterday's order? Three packs of dimensionals. Okay, so this is gonna go, I think this needs to come down a little bit lower because, and actually this is the wrong one. I want this one over here. I want this one here. I have a little bit of a gap. That's how this car, how this knot was born. There was a kind of a funky gap and I didn't like it. So that's how I ended up tying the ribbon around the front of the card instead of layering it on top like I did that one. All right, and then this one can go up a little bit higher. I don't know, like there. Okay, so now we just need our ribbon. I'm just gonna tie a bow to put on the front of my card and hope that, hope that I can tie it without having it look like a disaster. I think it's hard, it's hard enough to tie a decent bow when you're alone, let alone when you have an audience. Right? Am I wrong? Okay. So there's that bow. I'm just getting a glue dot. And I had my scissors. You know, sometimes you can clean up too much. So these are just some jumbo glue dots. All right, so I have to snip my ribbon. All right. I'll fix that later. All right, so just get some glue dots on the back. And this one went off the side. So probably about there. And then this one ties around the front. I see some people are dropping off. You get to the part where you're tying bows right before you finish the project and they're saying, yep, I got it. I'm done. Oops. Except I got my ribbon twisted. All 
All right. Yeah, this knot and bow tying, I'll tell you. It's all well and good until you get a twist in your bow. Like, well, this one, it's just going to fight me. It wants to go this way, so I'm just going to let it. Sometimes you just have to let the ribbon do what it wants. But there's a trick. So the ribbon decided that it wanted to go that way. I wanted it to go the other way. Oh, and I also have a twist in the back. Isn't that nice? So you know what? You pull it off. Fix the twist. That's why the ribbon was giving me a hard time. I had it twisted behind the card. Here I'm blaming the ribbon, and it wasn't the ribbon's fault. All right, so now I pretty much have it fixed. And I can just take the front of the card, bend it, slide the ribbon back on, slide it up, and then off camera, I can fluff with it, fluff it a little bit more, but actually that's not even that bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm gonna not fluff it anymore. I'm just gonna stick it. So I'll just get another glue dot. And put it on the back of the ribbon and we're gonna be done. All right, so there you go. Quick and relatively easy. And flip over your stamps because I actually put down one of these on top of the stamp and luckily I only got a teeny tiny little line. So those are our four cards. Now you'll notice on this one I added a rhinestone because I didn't like the way that the inside of the flower had come out. So you can add a rhinestone if you want. This is the difference you'll get. One has a rhinestone, one doesn't. Just depends on how much layering you want and whether or not you care for the rhinestone. So that's that one. And then this is the other one. Now the other thing I did, just to bling it up a little bit more, I'm gonna push these out of the way, is on these flowers here, on my original samples, and it's really hard to get the light to shine. I had put some Wink of Stella on the flowers. So if you want, you can take your Wink of Stella pen and add it to the flowers just to give it a little bit more bling. And I also, I'm not gonna do it right, oops, that's my old one. <laughs> That's the sample. I'm not gonna do it right now because they need to dry. Okay, so now we have Wink Estella on that one too. Everything needs a little bling. I don't know if you could see it earlier, but I also did Wink of Stella on the inside of the card. You can't really see it, but it's there on the inside on the flowers. All right, folks, well, that is our class for today. And I'm cleaning up my mess. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed playing with some of my oldies but goodies stamp sets that I've had hanging around that needed some love and some new stamp sets that had just been sitting around going unused. Don't forget, um, we have two days left on the celebration, so you can get your free products when you place your orders at $50 or more in my online store, and we also only have a couple months left of our retiring in colors, of which the Sweet Sugar Plum is one of them. So if you like those in colors, be sure to order them starting now. And actually now would be a good time because you'll get your free celebration items. But don't wait to see if they're going to go on sale. Don't wait to see if they're going to hit the clearance rack a year from now. 
If you like some of these colors, grab them now. Grab your cardstock, make sure you have your reinkers because last year I learned the hard way. I did not order one of my reinkers. I had it marked in my catalog that I had bought it. I had not bought it. I didn't double check my inventory. It was what watermelon wonder and I don't have the reinker. I am one sad little demonstrator because I didn't even listen to my own advice. So go through your inventory. Make sure that you have the cardstock for those colors. Make sure you have your markers. Make sure you have your ink pads. Make sure you have your ink refills. Grab any ribbon that you happen to like that coordinates with those colors. And go through the DSP and see if there's any of that DSP that you like that uses those retired colors. But get them now. Don't wait for a sale. Don't wait for for the clearance rack six months from now because there's no guarantee that they're even gonna be there. So that's just my um, my little warning because I learned the hard way. So I don't want you to, to be sorry like me. Okay, well, thanks everybody. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. If you're celebrating Easter this weekend, have a fantastic Easter. And I hope to be here on Tuesday. I'm going to be packing for, for on stage, so there will not be a Live at Five on Thursday because I will be heading for Atlanta to attend on stage. Hope to be here on Tuesday, um, and if something changes, then I'll be sure to post it on my Facebook page. So thanks, everybody. I hope you have a fabulous weekend, and remember, be a crafter, don't be a collector. And I'll see you next week. Bye.